another edition of Exposing False Teachers and False Prophets and False Pastors and every devil worker there is. Today, we got our brother Stephen Anderson. Oh, we got a Baptist devil right here. Let me tell you some of you in a Baptist church, you need to get up and leave. They don't have the truth at all. All right. I, as one speaking who uh, came out of a Baptist church, they baptize wrong. Uh, they tell you that the gifts of God are gone. Uh, there's no spiritual gifts speaking in tongues. There's no casting out devils. There's no none of that in, in their opinion. No, no healing the sick. Bunch of liars. Bunch of liars. And that the biggest thing is they tell you you don't have to turn from your sins to make it to heaven. You bunch of devils. Man, anybody following this guy right here, you are following the devil straight to hell. Not only does he hate homosexuals, he wishes that they die. Listen, we don't hate nobody. And you can't be a God hating nobody. But we're going to get all into it. It's time to expose this man. All right, now we're going to get in to show you that, you know, a lot of these people uh, are not called by God to preach and teach God's word. Listen, I spoke to God, right? God told me to warn them, for I'm coming soon, my son, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And it was, and then I heard a bunch of trumpets in the end as he, as he ran, uh, uh, as God went away from me. But being in the Holy Ghost, being in the presence of God is a, is, is, Think about your best time you've ever had in your life. Times it by a million and you wouldn't even understand uh, 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 just being in the presence, that, that feeling of, of being in the presence of God. It makes you feel like you're a little kid, the authority, the love, the compassion, the mercy that comes from this interaction with God is amazing. All right. And I've had many interactions with God. And you can check that on YouTube where, uh, where I've had dreams and visions and all these things of God. But look what this man tells you. And when you call by God, or did you have to go to school to be a preacher? Well, I believe that I'm called by God, but the Bible says if any man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, etc. So I believe that if you have the desire and you meet the qualifications, you may volunteer to preach God's word. That's not the question he asked. He said you were called by God, so he's making up excuses to why he's not called. All right. Um, I'm going to show you the verse what he's talking about, and we're going to go into it. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. These are the qualifications of being a preacher. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire for good work. A bishop then must be blameless. Do you know what blameless means? It means to be innocent, guiltless, uh, innocent of wrongdoing, perfect, sinless, spotless, unblemished. Meaning to turn from his sins and walk with God. You're going to learn squeaky clean, as you see right here. Pure, perfect, like I said before. This is what the qualifications of a pastor is. And if you're sinning, you can't be no pastor. But notice the other part that he left out. Look at verse 3. Not given to wine, nor no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient. All right? And not a brawler. All right? You can't be that. Can't be a brawler. Can't be uh, not patient. All right? 2 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 14. Now we exhort you brethren. Warn them that are unruly. Meaning to be disobedient. Comfort the feeble minded. Meaning the weak. Support a uh, 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 feeble minded. Meaning uh, 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 mentally uh, weak. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Right? Be patient toward all men. And warn them that are disobedient. To the almighty. And notice you see right here in 13. And be at a peace among yourselves. 
So this guy's a good interviewer, but he's still a devil too. Jesse Lee Peterson, he doesn't believe in uh, uh, obeying God. He's, he, he's living a sinful life. He doesn't even believe in the word of God uh, uh, to be the true word of God. So uh, uh, never mind him to the left. Uh, he's a good interviewer. He's a good debater. So you're going to see him actually uh, uh, pull the lies out of this man and pull the hate and the devil out of him, which is pretty awesome to see for me so we can judge him off, off his uh, hateful ways. Um, so he's going to ask the questions, and if they don't answer him, he's good at making them answer it. Watch this. Word. And so I, I consider myself a volunteer. And so, so were you called by God? I didn't have some kind of a supernatural call experience, but I do believe in retrospect that I am called. And so were you called by God? Yes. Okay. In uh, retrospect, yes. In retrospect. Paul was called by God. God came to talk to him. Acts chapter 9, verse 3, verse 9. And he, as he had journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Oh, we know that Jesus Christ is the light. So here we go. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? So he wanted to know who, who is God, who is the Lord talking to him. And the Lord said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecute. And it's hard for thee to kick against thy pricks. And he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be, it should, it, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Paul was visited by God Almighty, Father Lord, and his name was Jesus Christ. And he told him what he wanted him to do. Men of God are are not made by biblical schools or forced into a role. They're called by God. That because I followed the Bible's command that if I desired the office of a bishop and meet the qualifications, that I should do that. And then I did that. And then God has blessed. So looking back, it's clear that I'm called. Although I did, I didn't have some experience where the whole room lit up and an angel came and told me that I was called or something like that. See how he mocks God's ways. These men, they mock the Bible. Don't even know it. He's mocking Paul. Mocking the apostles. He's mocking everyone that God came to directly and, and, and called on that man to preach and teach the gospel. Do you know why he doesn't understand that? Because he's never had an experience with God in the spirit. He walks in the flesh. He lives after the flesh. He walks after sin. It means to be called by God to have that type of experience? Absolutely not. But that's what a lot of people think that it means. So that's why oh, I, I just see. clarify that. Yeah. Are you, do you sin? Yes, I do. You, what type of sin? He just told you he sins. He's disqualified from preaching the gospel. Scripture says must be blameless, perfect. Those that preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Now listen to the excuse for sin. And this is where the devil it's mad when you start telling them they got to turn from their sins. And you commit. Well, the Bible says there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And the Bible says that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Uh -huh. The Bible also says that whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. So obviously God is not scourging his son. Make this very, very clear. <clears throat> All men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All right. That does not give nobody the right to keep sinning to hell or teaching people that they can't they uh, 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 they uh, uh, they can't turn from their sins because they never seen. They never felt the Holy Ghost. 
They never knew the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. They don't have Christ's spirit. Whether a man tells you it's the Lord's spirit, whether it's God's spirit, whether it's the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Christ, it's all the same. It's only one spirit. Here it is. 1 John 1, 8. This is what every lukewarm believer goes to to try to justify living and practicing and having a license to sin. A lukewarm pastor. Can you imagine such a thing? That whole congregation on the way to hell. And anybody that's following this fool, you are in danger of hellfire. 1 John 1, 8. Now let's explain this. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Let me tell you something. They always tried to use that against you and say, well, what do you think? I've turned from my sins and I walk with God now because God, uh, the, the invisible spirit of God that dwelleth in me uh, uh, stops me from doing the wrong things in life. They had never experienced the Holy Ghost. So they don't understand this verse. If we say that we have no sin, I never said I'd never sin. I, I, I was one of the worst sinners there was. So I ain't deceived. I've sinned. But a real man of God, a woman of God, turns from their sins and walks with God. Listen, you will not enter into heaven practicing any sin in the word of God. Never forget that, man. God will cast you into hell. These are liars. There were perfect men in the word of God, not saying they never sinned before, but they turned from their sins and walked with God. Enoch was one of them. Uh, Noah was one of them, as he's called, righteous, perfect and righteous man of his time. Job was another one, perfect and righteous man who eschewed evil, meaning he hated evil, hated sin. When you hate sin and you don't want to go to hell, you'll turn from your sins. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Know ye not, man, y'all pay attention, man. Anybody that tells you you do not need to turn from your sins to make it to heaven is a liar. Look what the scripture says. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Did you know that the unri all unrighteousness is sin? Know ye not that sinners shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, y'all. God's warning you. Do not be deceived by these liars. Neither fornicators, neither idolaters, neither uh, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Meaning not just homosexuality, feminine men. God didn't make no man feminine. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Homosexuals, nor thieves. Nor covetous, meaning somebody who's covenant after other things, wishing greedy. I want to get this from my neighbor and I'll do anything to get it. Covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers. Those who are out there angrily slandering people, using all types of names. Nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's what God said. The same God from the Old Testament is the same God in the New Testament. Corinthians is in the New Testament. Now look what it says in verse 11. And such were some of you. But you are washed. You are sanctified, meaning you've been baptized. You have received the Holy Ghost. You've been sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord. Who is the name of God? Jesus. Who is the name of the Father? Jesus. Who is the name of the Lord? Jesus. And by the Spirit of our God. So some which were some of you, but you have changed. You have went down, came back up. The old man dies and the new man comes up. And you ain't serving sin no more. You're serving God. Because you fear hell, you fear God, and you keep his commandments. That's what the spirit of God in somebody dwells in. Uh, uh, the spirit of God dwells in you and you become one. Let me show you that scripture. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So he that is joined unto the Lord's spirit is one spirit. And when you got God living and dwelling in your temple, 
you will turn your life around. Stephen Anderson has never experienced this. So he doesn't want his congregation knowing that you got to turn from sin. And I'm glad that man asked him that question. Because y'all need to see that these liars are leading you to hell and not talking about sin in the church. Turning from sin. Why? Because they're sinning. They're living a the life of the devil. They're uh, 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 trying to hide the real gospel. It ain't just about belief. Many steps you got to do to get to heaven, man. Repent for your sin. Jesus said in Luke, Luke 13, 3, unless a man repent, he shall likewise perish. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus said, unless a man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John 3, 5. And we'll go into all the other scriptures about how we got to turn from our sins and walk with God, y'all, as we just went over. The right things, he's scourging his sons because they sin, because everyone sins. What type of sins do you commit? Well, I'm, I'm not going to sit here like in a confessional booth and, and recite my sins to you. And why not? The devil's getting mad. See, this is a man that knows the Holy Scriptures. He knows what it says. You got to turn from your sins, but he doesn't like to be pressed on it. And if you can't press your pastor on the truth, what well, God said this and you said that, you know what I'm saying? Why are you going against God? Then he's not a pastor. He's not a pastor. You should be able to question your pastor. Hey, Jesus said this. You said that. Wait a minute. Which one is it? Should we believe you or should we believe Jesus? I'm going to go with Jesus every time. And then I'm going to walk right out of there. Because that would be highly inappropriate. And do you tell others at your church not to sin or do you tell them that it's okay to sin? I tell them not to sin. But why are you telling them not to if you are sinning yourself? Because every apostle in the New Testament told people not to sin and they all sinned themselves. So I'm following the example of the apostles and prophets who were all sinners and yet preached for people not to sin. And did those people sin once they, the, uh, the ones in the Bible, the prophets, did they sin once they were born again? Absolutely, since the apostle Paul wrote Romans chapter 7 and talked about his continual struggle with sin and continually doing the things that he hates as he's writing the epistle to the Romans. Mm, and so that's a lie. When, when he said let, let me, that, let me explain he... that. Paul in Romans chapter 7 was talking about the, 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 uh, uh, the war against the spirit and flesh. And he told you to walk in Romans chapter 8. He told you to walk after the spirit and not in the flesh. Let, sh let me show you. All right. Verse, uh, Romans chapter 7 verse 11. We'll start at for sin taking occasion. By the commandment, deceived me, and by it, slew me. So when he was a sinner, he was he's speaking about the old time when he was the devil, when he was a devil child. He's not talking about a few, he's sinning now and living, living for the devil. This is people that have lost their minds. So if we look at verse 7, uh, let's see where they start at. Uh, verse 13, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin that it might appear sin working death in me that by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am cardinal. He's talking about the war between the, the flesh and the, and the spirit. Sold under sin. The flesh wants to sin, y'all. The flesh wants to do, is greedy. The, it wants to do all these things that, go, that contradict the spirit of Christ, right? So verse 16, I'm sorry, verse 15, for that which I do allow not for what I would that do I not, but what I hate that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I can sit unto the law that is good. Now then it is no more I that did do it, but that sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is my flesh dwelleth no good thing. See how he's talking about the flesh? The flesh is corrupt. The flesh is, it, 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 it needs the spirit in order to overcome sin. 
That's why Jesus, uh, God, he'll tell you in Romans chapter 8, and we'll go to that so much, because they just leave off in chapter 7 thinking that Paul out here is sinning to hell. You know, when he said, awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. Verse 19, for the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do, I would not. Is not is it, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So we saying that the flesh wants to sin. The flesh wants to do these things. But it, 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 the, the, the spirit is contrary to that. And we're going to learn that. I'm going to go into all that. I find that in the law that when I do good, evil is present with me. So when he's trying to do good, when we're trying to do good, here comes the devil trying to play on our fleshly desires. So you, you, you're seeing what Paul is dealing with, with this. Uh, uh, the, uh, one scripture talks about how Paul was a thorn. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Paul said that uh, Satan was a thorn in his side. So he was playing on his past. In dreams, the devil's going to play on your past. All right. And he's going to bring people into your life and, 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 and the flesh to send people your way to try to get you back into sin. All right. If you're trying to over come sin but the only way to overcome sin is christ's spirit living and dwelling in you and we're going to go into that because they leave out because romans chapter 6 is the the chapter before that it talks about how you have to turn from your sins and walk with god you don't believe me look up chapter 6 that's the thing they leave out talks about turning from sin in romans chapter 6 Romans chapter 7 talks about the, 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 the war between the flesh and the spirit. And then the chapter 8 of Romans talks about how we should walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And I'm going to go all into it. I find, uh, so we're in verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law of my members warring against the law of my mind. So you see the war that's going on between the devil that using the flesh. And he's playing on his mind, his past sins and all his other things uh, uh, that he was a murderer and bringing me into captivity, meaning a slave to the law of sin, which is in my members, member in the flesh. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself, myself serve the Lord, the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of the sin. So the flesh wants to sin. The spirit of God wants to live holy and live right with God. And the spirit always overcomes the flesh. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. It will stop there with any other thing. Any other translation than the King James Version will stop from here to here. And you're missing the most important part of this verse. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the, the spirit. And notice that it's uppercase. So you know what it's talking about. Talking about the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. For the law of the spirit is of a spirit of life is Christ Jesus, who had made me free from the law of sin and of death. So. When you have Christ's spirit living in you, you are free from sin. You are living a holy, righteous, blameless, a, 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 a life of God, holy. Be ye holy for I am holy. Jesus said, be perfect for your heavenly father is perfect. This ain't no game, man. I'm telling y'all the real honest truth. What God's word says, no sugarcoating it. Are people going to hate me for it? Yes. I don't care. I'd rather see you hate me and go to heaven than, than, than hate me and go to hell or love me and go to hell. However you want to put it. Look at verse three. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Talking about the Mosaic laws, how they didn't have Christ uh, in them uh, uh, when it came to in their minds and hearts what God wanted. And because we know that uh, stealing, murder. All these things are wrong. But back then, idolatry, they didn't know that stuff. They had to go by what Moses said through God. Weak through the flesh. So they was weak. They were weak through the flesh. They had, I mean, they, they fell. But the, back then, they stoned you to death. 
Now we're in the New Testament where you got a chance to be right with God. One, uh, one John chapter one, verse nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. But don't take that lightly, because in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, it says, for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Well, you might say, Kurt, well, you just reading off the property. No. Nah. I know the word of God. I can't be tricked by devils like this. They can trick you. Why? Because you don't know the word of God. And if you don't know the word of God, the devil going to trick you. Get in the word of God. Don't listen to these pastors. All men are liars. God said it's better to trust in the Lord than to put trust in man. As it says in Psalms 118 uh, verse 8. Back to the scriptures. God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Did you know that Jesus Christ condemned sin in the flesh? That the righteous of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh. Who walk not after the flesh. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Uppercase, so you know what it's talking about. Holy Ghost. Verse five, for they that are after the flesh, like Stephen Anderson, do mind the things of the flesh, sin. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, meaning to be worldly minded, to be uh, sinning minded is death. But to be spiritually minded, living holy, living righteous, trying to live for God. Minded is life and peace. Because the cardinal mind, the worldly mind, the sinning mind is enmity against God. Meaning you are an enemy when you sin against God. One scripture says he that committeth sin is of the devil. Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 32 and 34. Uh, uh, th yeah, around the area. If you commit of sin, you are the servant of sin. Meaning you serve the devil. Because the cardinal mind is an enemy against God, for it is not subjected to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You living for your flesh for sin, the pleasures and the delights of sin, you are living the life of the devil. Verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh. Look what God tell you. But in the spirit. And if so, be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. <coughs> it says spirit of God right here. Yet it says spirit of Christ right here. Talking about the same thing. Yet they'll make two out of that. Foolish people. Not, not able to discern the Holy Scriptures and shouldn't even be touching them. He is none of his. So without the Holy Spirit... Uh, to overcome sin and live a holy and righteous life and blameless and, and spotless, however you want to put it. Unblemished. To overcome the flesh, you are none of his. Verse 10, and, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit, the, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. This is the same Paul. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, your fleshly bodies, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. So if you live for sin, ye shall die. But if you, through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of your body, meaning the sins of your body and, 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 and the things that's trying to uh, steer you away from God, ye shall live. For as many as been led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So those who have God's spirit living and dwelling in them and have turned their backs on sin are the sons of God. For ye are not received the spirit of bondage against the fear. Notice it's up a uh, lower case. So it's talking about a devil spirit. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby ye cry, 
Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if the children then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Notice it says heirs of God and joint, and joint heirs with Christ. It ain't two people. It's just telling you who they are. God, Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified with him. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that which should be revealed in us. For the earnest expression of creation, a creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. See, this is a smart pastor. All right. He knows the word of God. And if you start to come to the knowledge and truth and you start testing them on that, he just going to kick you out of church. And we don't go into that because I've seen it where he did that. And I'm going to show you all that pretty soon. But this is the same Paul said, the one that he said is out here sinning. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame, Stephen Anderson. But he's not. He knows what he's doing. This is what the bad part is. It's like a woman pastor. The reason why they block you, the reason why they uh, try to uh, 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 exclude you when you tell them, uh, uh, show them 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, uh, verse 33 through 36, where it condemns a woman preacher is because they know it's wrong, yet they're still doing it out of pride. So this is what this man is doing. He's not willing to change. He's not willing to serve God. Oh, he doesn't even know it exists. Let's put it to you in a real term. He doesn't even know it's possible to over to overcome sin. Let's keep going. As he's writing the epistle to the Romans. And so when, when he said that, was he saying that, oh, I am now born again and I still sin? Absolutely. Amazing. That's a lie. And what That's a lie from hell. Nowhere in the scripture say I was he's born again because if you're born again, you ain't serving sin. No scripture says I was sinning as I was born again. What a liar. On John 3 18, he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested. God came to manifest in the flesh. To what? Destroy the works of the devil, which is sin. Not to be living and practicing sin, thinking that you are of God. You lying to yourself. Whoever is born of God, doeth not commit sin. This contradicts his whole, uh, uh, he is contradicting the word of God by what he just said. He said that Paul was born again and that he was still sinning. Liar. Whoever is born of God, doeth not commit sin. For a seed remaineth in, him, remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. Why? Why can't he not sin, Paul? Because he is born of God. And this the children of God are manifested, the ones that are born again, the ones that have turned their back on sin, the ones that live for God. And the children of the devil, the ones that are serving sin, serving, acting like they're of God, yet they're still living their devilish, unholy Wicked, evil ways, calling themselves children of God, lying to everyone. Come tell me that. Come tell me that, you lukewarmers. You are disease in the church. Listen, man, we go to the church as a hospital to overcome sin and live in the spirit. But, man, we got to get our minds right to understand sin is wrong and we got to stop it. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Twice. Twice. Repent and be ye, de be ye converted that your sins may be blotted out. I'm going to show you some scriptures about you have to turn from your sins. But there's two manifestos of children. Whether they're believers or unbelievers. A children of God is living holy, righteous, the ways of God. He's got Christ's spirit living in him. And the children of the devil, whosoever, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. 
neither he that loveth not his brother. So this two chapter in verse 10 reflects on him because he hates homosexuals. He hates Barack Obama. Who, who else knows who, what he hates? He might be a racist for all we know. Let's just be real about it. I ain't finna put that on him anything, but where there's one lie, there's many lies. And if he hate one person, he got to hate a whole bunch of other people as well. And not hate somebody and be of God, ladies and gentlemen. You're born again of God if you're still going to be sinning. If, because sin is Satan's nature. Why would you be bothered being born again if you're still going to be sinning? And all those who sin are slaves to sin. What's the purpose of being born again? Well, the Bible says that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So being born again is the prerequisite for entering the kingdom of God or for going to heaven. So but you believe, is, do you believe that sinners will enter the kingdom of heaven? No, I do not. Well, well how can you... That's a clear contradiction. He said that sinners will not enter the kingdom of God. It's a clear contradiction. Y'all got to see this. A man can't sit there and tell you that he is sinning, right? Practicing a sin, whatever he's doing. Uh, 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 we don't know because he won't tell us because they're embarrassed by it. If they weren't embarrassed by it, they would tell you what it was. 1 John 5, 18. He's telling you that he is committing sin, yet he's telling you at the same time he doesn't think that sinners make it to heaven. Now tell me what kind of sense that makes. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God sinneth not. Whoever is born of God sinneth not. Why, Lord? Because, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. The devil can't even come close to me when it comes to that. Praying all the time for it, y'all. And this is, you got to guard your eyes. This ain't, this is hard work, man. This is really hard work every single day. I got to guard my eyes. I got to guard my mind. I got to guard my heart. I got to guard all these things away from the devil. So I don't fall back into that because the devil's putting up traps, putting up schemes, trying to get me there. But God said, promise us that wicked one touches, uh, touches us not. Whoever is born of God sinneth not. So is he born of God? No. Why is he preaching if he's not born of God in sinning? Ask yourself that. If you're a sinner. Because of the fact that when we get born again, our body is not born again. Our flesh is not born again. Only our spirit is born again. So my flesh and blood is not going. There is no scripture on this planet that says my flesh sins, but my spirit does it. Your, fle your spirit is in your flesh. All right, and if your flesh is sinning, guess what your spirit is doing inside of there? Sinning. And you're going to be a, and God is going to hold you accountable on judgment day and one and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 it says for all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ and will be a uh, 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 let's go to it. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10, so y'all fear God. I don't want to misquote it. For we must all be appear, be, uh, I'm sorry, appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All. Notice the word all. So don't think that you're special and you're going to just pass by the judgment. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done. Whether it be good or bad. We're going to be judged off. He's not special. This is not our body that we have all, right here, this flesh. This is God's holy temple, and it's going to testify against you on judgment day. Hey, he did this. He did that because it's God's, not yours. Part of me that is sinful, the flesh, is going to die and go into the earth, and my perfect, regenerated, sinless soul is going to go to heaven. And sinless so soul. Isn't that so foolish? So fo No scripture that says that at all. He made that up. He came up with his own doctrine, y'all. This is a doctrine of devils, all right? Telling you it's okay. No big deal. You can sin in the flesh because your spirit's not sinning as well. If you believe that lie, you will be casted in hell on judgment day, y'all. I'm warning you. 
The spirit doesn't control the body? Well, when the spirit controls the body, that's when we do what's right and don't sin. But when we walk in the flesh, then we fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the Bible says the spirit lusteth against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. So my spirit is... So he's right about that. They're contrary to another. Notice he said that they're contrary to the flesh and spirit. But he's not understanding that. Let's go to the scriptures. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Just because the flesh and the spirit are contrary to one another does not mean that they're separate. One scripture says in James uh, chapter 2 verse 26. It says, uh, for without the, without the spirit, the body is dead. The flesh is dead. So in order, if your spirit was to leave your body, it would be dead. So if the spirit is in the body, it is alive in the flesh. All right. This I say, verse. Uh, so he said they're contrary to one another. He's trying to separate the two like they're not together. Uh, 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 Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the l flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Notice it's uppercase. So you see which one is going through. All right. So we're getting Paul again explaining the war against the flesh and the spirit. But he say walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. So why? If you're walking in the flesh, you're walking in sin. If you're walking in the spirit, you're walking a holy and righteous life living for God. All right. And that's what that means, y'all. These people have no idea what they're talking about. He's a very slick, smart pastor. All right. He can flip things around right in front of your face. And this is why I'm exposing him, because a lot of y'all being led to hell by this man just because he sounds good. Or because he hates homosexuals. All right. Verse 17 for the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if you are led of the spirit. Ye are not under the law. Now let's see what the works of the flesh are. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, uh, uh, driven by lust, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance. He's hatred. He hates homosexuals. He hates homo he, he's going to admit that. And we're going to go all into it. You're going to see it very soon. So this is the works of the flesh, which he is living in. He's not living in the spirit. All these things, uh, uh, some of these things, wrath as well. Uh, the uh, One scripture says, for the wrath of God is, uh, 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 it, it worketh not the righteousness of God. So uh, 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 make sure that we pay attention to that strife. All right. Fight, fight, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, with your, with, your, with your fist and stuff like that. Seditions, meaning heresies. All right. Uh, 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 contradicting the word of God. All right. Envies, murderers, drunkenness. Revealings and such like what of that? I'm sorry. Of, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy. Now we get into the fruits of the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ. It is love, joy. Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, meaning humble, temperance, meaning to abstain from alcohol and, and stuff like that that make you unsober. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. So look what it says. So, and they that are, are Christ, meaning they have Christ's spirit living, have crucified the lust of the flesh. With the affections and lusts. Verse 25. Look at this. Pay attention to it very, very closely. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit, y'all. Why is he not walking in the spirit? If he was walking in the spirit, he wouldn't be sinning. It wouldn't be telling everybody it's okay to live. Uh, uh, you, you know, listen. These are faith alone liars. You see me in the debates in a couple of these people. Where they listening to this guy, Stephen Anderson, and they following this devil straight to hell. 
If we live in the spirit, the Holy Ghost lives in us. Let us also walk in the spirit. I said you got a right to question these pastors to see if they are of God or if they are not like this man is doing to the left. And going to heaven, but my flesh is still unregenerate. And that's why I still sin because I'm in the flesh. And so now that you're born again, you're, you're a pastor of God and you're born again. Are there moments where your spirit is not controlling your body because you're sinning? Absolutely. How do you, how is it that the spirit, once you are born again and your spirit is now of God, how is it that it has moments when it's sinning, when it's not controlling the body? Because how does sin overcome this, overtake the spirit if you're now of God? Because every single day we have to die to self. Paul said, I die daily. We have to deny self and take up the cross and follow him. And so if we don't make a conscious effort to mortify the flesh, the flesh will be in charge in our lives. And if it were... Makes no sense because he's telling you that I'm still sinning. So he's living after the flesh. Makes no sense. And the guy brought up a great point. How can you walk in the flesh, walk in sin, and have the spirit of God in you? Doesn't make no sense. And this, and, 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 he's, and he's questioning him on it. I die daily to myself. Well, why are you out dying daily? Why are you not living for God? It's because you ain't born again. Ain't everybody out there sinning to hell? Listen, some of us are, 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 are living for God and want to live holy as God commanded. Right? And that's only by the spirit of Christ. Listen, I had to get on my knees and beg Christ for help. Let me tell you something. I'm not better than none of y'all. All right? I'm trying to show you the instructions and what I did to get to where I'm at now, where he's not nowhere near. And plus, he's, he, God then gave him over to a reprobate mind. All right. He's believed these lies. Pick up your cross daily and walk out. That's talking about the word of God. If you not, if you not, if you living in sin and you living for the devil, you are not picking up your word of God and obeying it. One scripture talks about how the wrath of God is on the children of disobedience. Let's go to that. Colossians 3, 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Failure to obey God. Ephesians 2, 2. We're in past. We're in time past. We're in time past. In your past, you walked according to the course of the world. Sin, the devil, according to the prince of the power of air, the devil, the spirit, look at his lowercase, the spirit that now worketh and, and the children of disobedience. That's the spirit that works in the child, children of the devil. Sinning, sinning. You cannot serve sin and serve God. Y'all got to wake up, man. We in the last days in the end times and these devils are lying to y'all. Being saved or being born again just automatically makes you walk in the spirit. Then you wouldn't have to tell us over and over again, be filled with the spirit, walk in the spirit. Don't give in to the lust of the flesh. He wouldn't have to give us all those commands. Oh, he doesn't tell you over and over to do it. He's just telling you what to do. When you, um, when you, um, what does it, in John, I believe somewhere in John, the Bible says that, uh, if any man or woman say that they, of, of God, that they've been born again of God, but they still sin, that they are a liar and the truth is not in them, for this reason Christ came that you should not sin because sin is of your father, the devil. How do you explain that away? He murdered the verse, but he's on point to what he's saying. Matter of fact, let me show you what he's talking about. 1 John 2, uh, 4. He that say I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, meaning a devil. And the truth is not in him. The truth ain't in that dude, man. Let me show you some more. If ye love me, keep my commandments as God commands. So if you love him, keep his commandments. You don't love him, Stevie. Jesus Christ, John 15, 14. Ye are my friends if you do whatever I command you. 
John 14, 21, Jesus, he that have my commandments and keep them, keep them. Notice that big word. He is that that loved me and he that loved me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. He doesn't understand this stuff. That's why he's lost. He believes in many lies. Baptists believe in many lies, y'all. Luke 6, 46, verse 47, Jesus speaking again. And why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that which I say, Stephen Anderson? Whosoever cometh to me and hear of my sayings, and notice the big key word here, and do them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundations on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it. For it was founded upon the rock. It was founded upon Christ. Your uh, ways of, of obeying God, not just hearing it, but living it and practicing it. Your foundation is built on Christ and it won't fall. But look what it says that ones that doeth not his word, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation built in house upon the earth against which the stream did beat firmly and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Man, let me tell you, tell you what I chase down false teachers and I bring that word of God to them and I chase them. Hey, Jesus said this. Jesus said that. Why are you saying that? Matter of fact, let me show you what happens because they always run when that happens. Stand on the word of God. You could never go wrong. The wicked flee when no man pursue it. But the righteous are as bold as lions. God made us bold. I remember the apostles prayed for boldness and God blessed them with that. Boldness is a characteristic of God. Sin because sin is of your father, the devil. How do you explain that away? Well, number one, you're misquoting that scripture. That's not what it says. And number two, and you have to get the context of 1 John. In chapter 1, he already told you, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So you're taking that... You see where they go every time? If we say that we had no sin, we deceive ourselves. No sin. Past tense. We all got sin. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Not a man on this planet ain't never sinned before. In fact, we even inherited sin from our, our, our Abra, our Adam. So don't. So we're not saying that we never sinned. We're saying that we have turned from our sins and walked with God now. Something he doesn't understand you or, or think that is possible. It's crazy to me. God coming back for a blameless and spotless church. He ain't coming back for sinners. Y'all better wake up, man. Let me show you if you don't believe me. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7 through 10. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus, God Jesus, God the Father Jesus, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. All right, so he's taking vengeance on the unbelievers and that obey God. Not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sinners. Y'all better wake up. Look what he said he's going to do to you. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. You got to choose this day whom ye will serve. The devil and sin or God himself. Living holy, righteous. And if you are not living holy, repent and, and ask God to come in your spirit. And live in your dwell in your body so that you can overcome these things and live a life of God. Keep going. Twisting that scripture when, you it, that correctly and then I'll respond to it. How do you explain a way that it says that if you are born of God, you cannot sin because sin is of your father, the devil? How do you explain that away? I don't explain it away. I explain it the right way, which is to say that that part of me that is born again, which is my spirit, cannot sin. But since my flesh is not born again, my flesh can still sin. But it says that... <laughs> That's so foolish. That's so foolish, man. And if y'all would believe that lie, there's no scripture that said my, my flesh sins. My, my spirit is born again, but my flesh is not born again. What are you talking about, man? In order to be born again, 
you got to inherit the spirit of Christ. And God said specifically, he that committed sin uh, is, is not of God and is of the devil. All right? You cannot sin if you've been born again of God. It doesn't separate the flesh from the spirit because the spirit can co control the flesh. And so it's not separating one. How, why are you separating the flesh from the sin if it's the, uh, I mean, from the uh, spirit? It's the spirit that control the flesh. That's why when you're born again, he take the sinful spirit away from you. And now you're controlled by uh, the spirit of God, which is not of sin. Why are you separating the two? The entire New Testament separates the flesh and the spirit. Again and again, he talks about these are the works. <laughs> Nowhere in the New Testament does anything say that the spirit and the flesh are separate. If the flesh, if the spirit was separate from your flesh, it would be dead. It wouldn't be able to move no more. So there's obviously a spirit that's working this flesh. James 2 verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. You... As a pastor and as a born-again Christian, if the moment come, right at the moment where you are sinning, and the moment come and you die, will you still go to heaven? Absolutely. You would go to heaven? Even That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. We went over the scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. If you, call, if you are practicing those sins, you will be straight going to hell. Matter if you're a believer or unbeliever, this is where these pastors have gone away from the truth. In fact, he knows the truth. He's just trying to justify living and practicing sin. In fact, these type of people will mock you because God delivered you from sinning. So what do you think you are, perfect? Or what do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You know, uh, I didn't know I was talking to a sinless man. That's a lie. Only one that sinners is Jesus Christ. We just been delivered, born again. Something he doesn't understand or shouldn't be teaching nobody nothing. Absolutely. And why, but, but, but all those who sin cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why would he let you in? Because my soul is going to heaven, but Amazing. my flesh is going to stay behind. Is it possible you're wrong? Absolutely not, because Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out. When he say that, Jesus say that? He talking about uh, a people that have been born again and living holy for his life. Jesus said, be ye holy for I am holy. All right. He ain't talking about him. He ain't born again. He living for the devil. How can he be going to heaven? How can he be one of the chosen ones of God and not be plucked out if he's committing sin? These are where these liars come up with their own doctrine. He's not even of God. Out of my hand. Nothing could separate us from the love of God. I've been passed from death unto life. I shall not come into condemnation. I have everlasting life. It says they won't come into condemnation those that walk in the spirit and not after the flesh, as I saw you today. So be very careful, man. These people right here, smart pastors, and, and I, I put the quotations up, pastors, because that's an uh, air quotation, because that's not a pastor. It's a child of Satan. In fact, his fruit showed the child of Satan. We're going to get into that. So no matter what happens, I'm going to heaven because I have believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. I'm saved by... So this is what they believe. They believe that all they got to do is believe and they go into heaven. They ain't got to do nothing else. They ain't got to turn from their sins. They ain't got to repent. They ain't got to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what they believe. In fact, they tell you the Baptist theme is that uh, baptism doesn't save. Let me show you what baptism does save. He that is, Mark 16, 16, he that believe and is baptized shall be saved. These are God's words, Jesus Christ. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. From Peter chapter 3, verse 21, that like figure whereto even baptism do also now save us. Not according to the, uh, uh, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, meaning the flesh goes down, uh, 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 goes down in water and the flesh comes back up clean. Remission of sins. All right. Washed away. All right. 
The new old man dies, goes down in that water, and the new man comes up. Baptism does also now save us. Do not listen to these liars. Um, um, they all got the same doctrine, y'all. Have everlasting life. And so no matter what happens, I'm going to heaven because I have believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is a misconception. Look what he said. Whatever I, no matter what I do, I'm going to heaven. You don't know if you're going to heaven or not, fool. All right? And stop putting yourself in heaven when you got to go to judgment day. Should be fearing God. Should be fearing that judgment day, knowing you sinning. Yeah, you, and you're going to see people going to hell for your sin. He said that, uh, uh, that no matter what happens, I'm going to heaven. So by that feeling, a homosexual can, uh, 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 he don't have to repent. All you got to do is believe on Jesus Christ. He don't have to repent. He don't have to turn from his ways or nothing like that. He get, he's going to heaven. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's what they believe. Faith alone. If the homosexual uh, believes, he's going to heaven. Foolish. I'm saved by grace through faith, not by works. But sin is death. Don't you agree to that? Every lukewarm you know is always going to bring up Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Always leaving out verse 10. They're going to bring up Romans chapter 10, verse 9, and they're going to bring up uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4, where it talks about faith, right? Never mind the rest of the Bible. They're just going off that. But in fact, let's go over this scripture so that they can't sit here and lie to you because I don't like it because many things saved. As we just went over, baptism saves, uh, woman and childbearing saves, and 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, her children can save her, uh, hope saves, faith saves. Uh, 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 many things saved, but it doesn't say you're going to heaven. It's just try. It's just the steps to get there. This makes them feel good. This verse right here. All right. Look what it says. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight and 10. Cause you know, this is talking about faith for by grace. Ye are saved through faith. All right. So by the grace of God, the unmerited of God, you are saved by faith. But some of these people don't even believe that Jesus Christ is Father God. I mean, the Trinity is a lie from hell. All right? Uh, three of uh, three people, one God. And we're going to get into that because he believes in that mess. Where there is one lie, y'all, there is many. For by grace, the unmerited uh, favor of God, ye are saved through faith. And then not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So the gift of God, the, the grace of God is a gift from God by your faith. But they don't even believe, so they don't have the unmerited favor of God, meaning they don't have God in their life. They don't have God doing the, uh, the ways of life. They don't have faith. They really don't. And I'm just being real with you because they don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. Um, manifested in, He was manifested in the flesh, uh, uh, and he was talking to them. They believe it's two people and, you know, whatever it is. And, and, and there's God and there's little Jesus. That's the little God. You know, it's so foolish. Uh, verse 9. Not of works, meaning you can't uh, work to get it. You can't uh, 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 get things to uh, 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 do things to get the grace of God. It's it, it, it's something that was given to you by God through your faith. All right. Saved through your faith. Um, lest any man should boast. Yeah, they boast all the time about it. For we are his workmanship, workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You should be doing Good works, obedience, which God have before ordained that we should walk in them, walk in obedience. Works, that's what we're, anybody that brings up faith without works is dead. I Meaning faith without obedience is dead, y'all. These people are lost, man. I can't say I'm of God and yet I'm out there stealing, murdering. Doing all the wrong things, committing adultery, lusting over women. I can't be doing that stuff or I am not of God. We should walk. One scripture says we should walk as Christ walked and Christ walked perfectly. Makes sense because Christ told us in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48, Be ye therefore perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Now, why would God command you to do something and you can't attain it or you can't do it? Man, these people are sick. They shouldn't be pastoring nothing. Leading millions to hell. And this is where God leads me.
to warn them. There will be all warnings. Listen, you're going to have a bunch of Stephen Anderson idolater worshipers coming my way. Good. I hope they get so mad they turn from their sins today and walk with Christ. And, and ain't nothing y'all going to say or do or, or, or anything else that's going to make me say, you know what, I'm wrong on this. Nothing. Why? Because I'm obeying the Holy Scriptures. Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 20. Titus. Titus chapter 1 verse 13. The witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them sharply, y'all. Matter of fact, let's go to verse 12. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the creatines are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them sharply. That they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables, fairy tales, and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Stephen Anderson turned from the truth. 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Meaning, unto the holy, all things are holy. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God. So in order to be a believer, you got to know. They say they know God. They profess that they know God, but in works, deny him. In obedience, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work, a reprobate. Everything, every obedience, they, they, they make a lie and got an excuse for it. Why they can't obey God and why? And they mock you for trying to obey God. Child of Satan, the spawn of the devil. Let's keep going. Son of God, I'm saved by grace through faith, not by works. But sin is death. Don't you agree to that? Or do you agree to that? No, I don't. You don't agree to that? No, I don't. You don't agree that sin is death? No, I don't. Really? He just lied again, y'all. The sting of death is sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. The wages of sin is death. But it says right here, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. I'm telling y'all now, it is very easy to catch these liars in, if you know the word of God. If you know the word of God, you can catch these liars very, very well. I listen and pay attention to what they're saying, and I don't need no church fathers, or I don't need no or whatever is a, a history, a church history. I don't need none of that to do that. I don't need no Hebrew or old Greek to learn Hebrew or old Greek to do that. All I need to know is the word of God, y'all. Let me tell you something, man. When you know the word of God, they can no longer trick you. But then you want to know who's tricking you and who's not? Would you put your trust in a man for your salvation? No. That's what made me get in the word of God. They were all saying a hundred different things. Which one is right? And that the flesh is stronger than the spirit? It depends on the person. So with you, your flesh is stronger than your spirit? You know what? You're using man's logic. I quoted a bunch of scripture to you, and you're believing damnable heresy of sinless. See, they get mad. The devil in them gets mad when, you gotta, when you're testing them. Hey, testing that spirit. Because you say test the spirit. What lives in them? So the man on the left is testing the man's spirit who's got a little bit of knowledge of the word of God and uh, 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 he's not willing to uh, 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 sacrifice it for it. But he does, he's, he's a devil too. Don't, don't be misconstrued by him. Um, he doesn't even believe in the word of God and he's a, he's a pastor, you know, quotations. Uh, uh, but, it, you know, this, this dude right here to the right, you can see now he's getting angry. The devil in him is getting angry, right? But you got to tell him to turn from sin. Why are you... Why are you lit? You say you walking in the spirit, but yet your flesh is sinning. Well, wait a minute. Let's analyze this. So he is testing the spirit to see what lives and dwells in him. And we're learning now he's getting aggravated. Now the devil's coming out of him because he's his pride. He doesn't feel like he needs to be questioned. All right. And, 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 and we should all question everything. I don't know what's going on, but, you know, we don't question God, but we question man, whether they be of God or not perfection it's nonsense it's ridiculous and you know what the bible says that if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves because you're not deceiving anyone else see how they go to that same scripture every time every time y'all 
Lukewarmness. You're only deceiving yourself because I know you're a sinner. So, Everybody knows you're a sinner. You're only deceiving yourself if you're actually foolish enough to think that you have no sin. And so are you saying that you... It's not about not having no sin, brother. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But it's about turning from your sins and walking with Christ. He has no idea what he's talking about. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But he that commit of sin, present tense, and future is of the devil. So you can bring that scripture up to try to uh, uh, mis uh, 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 misquote it and, and, and try to uh, bring it into uh, fit your narrative. But in all actuality, it, you're only looking foolish. Your flesh is stronger than your spirit. That's why you sin. Well, you're, you're trying to put strange words in my mouth. I'm asking a question. That's a question. It's not put a word. The Bible says avoid foolish questions, and that's a foolish question. So I'm not going to answer your <laughs> foolish questions. So you're not going to answer. Oh, he's getting mad. The devil in him coming out. He that commit of sin is of the devil. If you're saying that the, your flesh is stronger than your spirit, and that's why you sin, you won't answer that? I'm not going to answer your foolish question. Okay, that's not the way the Bible phrases it. You're twisting scripture. You're teaching a false doctrine, a damnable heresy. It was just a question. Are you <laughs> saying you said that you sin, and are you saying that your flesh is stronger than your spirit, and that's why you sin? Well, allow me to avoid your foolish questions, since the Bible commands me to avoid foolish questions. Get him mad, the devil out of him, bro. Look at it. Very easy to bring devils out of people. Start to, all you got to do is just tell them, hey, turn from your sins and walk with God. You're a damnable heresy, uh, a false teacher. <laughs> I'm just quoting what Jesus said. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Yeah, yeah, Jesus never said that. I'm saved by faith through grace. All right, let's get into the hate part. Here we go. Can't be a hate. Can't be a preacher and be a hater of men. I won't. Um... No, I do not. I hate it. The Bible commands me to avoid foolish questions. So you won't answer that? No, I won't. Um, do you love the homosexuals? No, I do not. I hate homosexuals, and I wish that they would all die. And why do you hate them? Can you imagine calling yourself a man of God, and you just hate people, and you wish people to die, and y'all still don't see the error here? Well, let's show it through the Word of God. 1 John 3.15 Whoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. God calls them a murderer. 1 John 2 9. He that say that he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even to even unto now. He is in the devil even until now. Luke chapter 6, uh, verse 27 and 28. Let's see what Jesus said. Did he say, uh, wish them death and hate them? Or love them and pray for them. Let's see what Jesus said. But I say unto them, uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 27. But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Now, is that the opposite of what Jesus said? Absolutely. How could he have be born again or have the fruits of God or even have God with him? You know who's with him? The devil. Oh, you could be angry, Stephen Anderson, but you can't try to kill these people. And you can't hate them. Ephesians 4, 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Sin, the devil, darkness, wicked, evil, however you want to put it. That's what that brother is abiding in. He obeyed the devil. I hate Barack Obama. You, you say, well, you just mean you, you don't like what he stands for. No, I hate the person. No, wait, you mean you just don't like his politics. No, I hate him. Hateful views. The community, like, we contribute quite a lot. Like, the, just because of. Just That's AIDS alone is, is quite a contribution. No, no, you should have proven it, please. I'm still going to finish, okay? So, um, hey, get AIDS and die, freak. Like, we as a community, like, we contribute quite a lot. Like, the, just because of... The just AIDS alone is, is quite a contribution. No, no, you... Don't laugh. We spent hours 
trying to figure out whether the guy was mentally disabled or just Jewish. It's no joke. Don't laugh. We spent hours trying to figure out whether the guy was mentally disabled or just Jewish. This is no joke. Don't laugh. Will ever be allowed on this church as long as I'm the pastor here. About five or ten years ago, a lot of the stuff that I preached, people thought it was too radical. Now, to me, LGBT stands for let God burn them. Right. But you say, well, it's LGBTQ. Well, then you could say let God burn them quickly. There's so many people. In. We go back to it. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which is hatred, wrath. That ain't that ain't of God. That's the that's the flesh speaking. That's the devil in him. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Joe, listen, we don't hate the homosexuals. We love them. We hope they come to Christ. That's why we go out there preaching to them, that they turn from their, their wickedness and their wicked, perverted sin, and that they live for God. We don't curse them. We don't do this, uh, 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 wish them death. We don't do none of that stuff. That ain't the fruit of the Spirit. So Jesus said you will know a fruit. But, uh, let's go to it. It says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but in reality they are waving wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. You shall know them by their fruits. Not how many times they say they love Jesus or, or what they're preaching or, you know, all the other stuff. No, you pay attention to their fruits and their doctrine. Does it line up with God's word? Uh, wishing people, people deaf and wishing people uh, 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 and hating someone is not of God. Y'all pay attention. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs of thistle? Uh, even so, every, every good tree bring forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So uh, you, uh, uh, I can't bring bad fruit. I can't bring cursing and stealing and all this other stuff and saying I'm of, of God. That's the opposite of the hate and or wishing somebody death. That's the total opposite of the fruit of the spirit. All right. So you see here. Uh, a evil, uh, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, and a corrupt tree can't bring forth good fruit. So he can't bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hinned down and cast into the fire, cast into hell. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. That is that, you know, there are still people in our church who are getting sucked into this oneness garbage and 